I guess there's no better place to start on this than let's say let's go with cuties first, right? Let's start with cuties because I thought um, after watching it, I thought the reaction to it was a little bit overboard, right? Um, number one, I'd probably come into saying I'm a big believer in watching things or checking stuff out and making your own mind up. I'm not really a big believer in groupthink. I'm not a big believer in just taking the word of somebody else and just going along with it. I'd much rather, even if it requires me having to watch or listen to 10 minutes or 15 minutes of music that I'm definitely not going to like, I'd rather much, I'd much rather have my own personal experience of it so I can make my own decision as opposed to just take the word of somebody else. Now, of course, that is in within reason. There are some occasions when you don't need to waste your time and time is valuable. It's the one resource that we don't have. It's one resource that we cannot replenish. I understand that. But in terms of cultural, um, you know, cultural pieces of, you know, or just, yeah, it, in terms of cultural events, in terms of cultural pieces of art, in terms of music of any way, shape or form, performances, whatever they may be, I'd much rather see it with my own eyes and make my own decision. I do that a lot when it comes to clubs, you know, there'll be a lot of people or there'll be a lot of places, clubs are probably one of the best places for that, where a lot of the clubs, especially the ones that I frequent, would have, you know, various different nights that take place in said, said club, and it attracts a different sort of crowd, so it very your experience will very much depend on the time that you went, the people that you went with, um, what the night was on at the time, bloody bloody time of year, all these things are going to affect your time that you go there, so sometimes having the ability to just say, you know what, I understand you had a bit of a shit experience, but let me go on my own accord and make my own mind up. You will be able to kind of have a better gauge on exactly how you can judge it in the fairest light possible. And I think a good example of that has to be cuties because for all the uproar I saw on social, um, in the end, essentially what this was, was a piece of art that did its best to really talk about a very complex issue that for the most part, I think a lot of grown ups aren't very, a lot of grown-ups, especially I guess in the UK and in North America, aren't really ready to have that conversation about. I don't think so. I think there's a lot of burying their heads in the sand. There's a lot of, if anything, there's a lot of that kind of uh, puritanical, quasi-religious, um, you know, uh, constraints that you see uh, depicted via the mother of the main girl in this movie, right? Who plays a sort of traditional motherly sort of representation of what it means to be a woman in a Sen Senegalese, you know, East African family, right? You kind of get that feeling that a lot of the kind of reaction to it, especially some of the reaction, negative reaction in America from some of the Republicans and some of the Democrats and even here in the UK, everyone's sort of in uproar about it. I feel that there is a, it does kind of lend itself to that sort of point of view where, there is a lack of wanting even to understand where this piece of art can come from and what it's basically speaking about. Because if you look at it, if you kind of draw away from it as well, it's a it's a movie made by a what a Senegalese woman, a French lady, right? I'm sure she says French citizen, but essentially it's depicting her experience, right? Um, growing up, right? That kind of constant conflict that you're having in a when you grow up in a sort of immigrant household where you're having to uphold the traditions and the cultural um responsibilities that come with being from a certain place right then you're coming into a very liberal very free as you know in comparison to where you come from country your parents are having to struggle with it you're struggling with it so your siblings so your family members it's a little bit of a headache and i think a lot of immigrants who have seen cuties will probably relate to it a lot more than more so than i guess your your you know your average run of the day um caucasian that there probably doesn't necessarily see any of the cultural societal um relevance to it and frictions and battles that come along with it but it does speak a lot to the struggle of growing up in an immigrant household and even more so i would imagine right the struggle of growing up in an immigrant household being a young lady right coming into your pre-teens um you know discovering yourself as a woman all these really confusing things that happen during that school year especially once you go into school and you have to talk to you know you, you meet random kids like i remember that being one of the biggest things when you grow up in an immigrant family your parents being really worried and really annoyed about who you hang around with because i think there was a there was an understanding that they could do a pretty good job in terms of controlling you and maybe allowing you to think a certain way i say allowing you to think a certain way at home but the moment you stepped outside that door the moment you hang around your friends they knew it was all better off right you could be 
easily influenced easily swayed by some new kid new girl that came along and they they could have the potential to lead you astray and some of the some of the worry that a lot of these immigrants parents had especially in the areas that i grew up in they were they were not unfounded right a lot of the kids that i grew up with some of the immigrant households who were essentially just allowed to just do what they wanted to do or the ones that didn't really respond well to restrictions or being told what to do they didn't end up well for them some of them ended up in prison some of them ended up dying some of them ended up in not so um you know beneficial yeah, some of them made not so great choices that benefit that did not benefit their lives in any way shape or form so a lot of the restrictions and control a lot of these parents had with their kids you know they came from an actual place of love but unfortunately as we've seen in the movie the more restraints the more control you put on young kids especially when they're growing up in a very fast society i'd say and mostly you know in in western europe you're growing up in a society where you're essentially being inundated with media um that is essentially making you grow up a lot quicker than you should do especially technology especially social media it just you know it it it, it must be a real struggle my heart that does really go out to young immigrant families that are trying to bring up their kid with some kind of traditional values you know living in the western world it's near on impossible i'd say but of course you don't want to just let your kids do whatever they want to do so the movie is a talk is basically talks about that right it essentially kind of charts the story of this young um preteen girl who essentially um leaves her home country to live in france or live in paris specifically leaves behind her father they set up house and they're trying to get themselves acquainted and then she happens to um cross paths with a young bratty sort of like delinquent group of girls all on varying stages of their own journey and it's sort of like a way of her kind of identifying where she's at in the world and sort of exploring her femininity exploring her um progression her growing up as a young woman you, you essentially see her grow up in front of you on the screen without explaining the movie and um yeah and then of course on the backdrop of these girls learning how to twerk right that's basically the thing that's made made people feel a bit uneasy and I understand i get it i think some of the close-ups um some of the you know um some of the camera work is probably a little bit unsettling but i do think that you know as an artist as a director she has the right the director that put this together to depict that story in whichever way she pleases of course up to the audience to decide if they want to watch it but i think some of the shots could have probably you know you probably could have uh, panned away a couple of milliseconds earlier but i get that i get the point of it and if anything some of the people that are being prudish about it like they're going on as if that they don't know that tiktok exists right you go on tiktok now you open a new especially if you have especially if you don't have an, an account set up just open a new account and just go on the discovery page and see what gets pushed to you and you'll see that it's mostly very um young looking girls if not extremely young girls um dancing in very suggestive ways sometimes the algorithms i guess reward girls if they dress in you know tops that are um you know cr fairly cropped um braless to some extent um some kind of cotton or sheer that you know um bounces in the air in some weird way and it, that's what they gets promoted on that platform on a daily if not hourly basis um so to so somehow suggest this movie is not depicting real life is really really naive um unfortunately I, i'd assume most teenage girls or most preteen girls are having to go through the same struggle um they're having to kind of wrestle with these um conflicting feelings and emotions that they're having right especially when you think about it just through the lens of like imagine you're a young girl and you're growing up and you're a fan of rihanna you're a fan of beyonce you're a fan of all these you know your mom lets you flipping watch the what's that what's that uh, song cardi b with um what's the what's her name with the megan stallion wipe right how are you then meant to then have a how are you then meant to get offended by watching cuties if you allow your kid to watch wipe it's exactly the same sort of ideal isn't it um those women have, have now turned into the female heroines have now turned into the icons and people want to look up to in order for them to you know have something to aim for in the life that they're doing especially the you know the famous cardi b story of her being a stripper and now turning into this kind of you know boss business lady thing you can't have you can't have that story and then dismissed the cuties even though cuties is probably a bit more of a starker image of it and i guess in in her respect to cardi b's image i'm sure her actual real story not the hollywood kind of you know sanitized version of it is probably a lot darker than what she kind of has put out there probably for the sake of her own sanity but I think they're two in the same thing. 
I really do think they're both in the same thing. And again, I think as a story, I think it works pretty well. I think the actress that plays the young girl in it is amazing. I think essentially her whole, whole family does a really, really good job. I think, like I said previously, if you come from an immigrant family, you know how triggering this film is. There's a lot of scenes that you can kind of relate to regardless of um, where you are in the age, yeah, where you are in the age range or where you are in your journey, as opposed to kind of understanding your place in it. And I think it's kind of ends in a really cute way actually if you watch the entire movie you know her kind of wrestling with this new place that she's living in but then essentially coming back home at the end right and that's without even spoiling what actually happens there but i thought that kind of if anything it probably was a little bit too much of a um nice ribbon at the top right to kind of pin the story right a nice cherry on the top i would have kind of liked it to be a little bit more representative of what actually real life is like right instead of her coming back home maybe it should have been her you know ending up in the spiral of drugs and alcohol right which would have been really dark don't get me wrong but it probably would have been a better depiction of what actually happens um irl and um it must be difficult too because i'd imagine again like you know growing up as a guy I, i know you know from my experiences trying to hook up with girls back in the day like unfortunately just just part of the thing right being a secondary school like you saw the difference in the girls from like year seven to year nine in their attitudes right you saw how disinterested they came they started to become in guys like myself who happened to be in year 11 at the time and they were aiming like to hook up with boys in like sixth form and stuff right who are like what 18 maybe at the no 17 at the time 17 i'm gonna say right 17 18 sometimes and they were eagerly, they were aggressively trying to hook up with all the boys and they sort of looked over us. We weren't even, we weren't even alive at that time, right? And we were, what, 15, 16 at that time? That's an unfortunate part of just being a young woman, right? Unfortunately, um, there is a time when they are interested in you when you're at that age and then suddenly they, they, they be, you know, they mature a lot quicker than men do, I'd say, or young boys do at that stage. So it makes complete sense that they'd want to, you know, um, try to experience what it would be to be with a quote-unquote adult when well, they're not really adults right the kids are in like sixth form and stuff they're not adults they're just kids like us but when you're 15 and you're seeing a girl that you fancy in year nine or year 10 or something hooking up with a yeah hooking up with an older boy you sort of look at that older boy especially if he rocks up to your car in a car he might as well be 25 when he's not now on the side of the boy that's 25 does that mean he's a nonce I don't know right that's something that they'd have to kind of you know question themselves when they're having to you know that's something they have to question themselves um late at night when they're looking themselves in the mirror but i know that was a thing in my school growing up that was definitely a thing so some of the depictions they have of the girls essentially dancing in front of men who are of the age where they shouldn't be dancing in front of them like that they do essentially lend themselves to real life and again the other thing to think about as well this is a french movie right if you watch any bit of French cinema, if you watch any cinema from the from um from Europe, you'll know that we don't really have the same sort of hang up when it comes to sex as much as I guess North America does, right? North America kind of yeah. don't they have that thing where they they, they 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 don't allow people to say fuck and stuff on TV, so it makes complete sense where they get knickers and a twist from seeing the cuties out of it, right? We don't really have the same issue, and if anything, at most French movies I've seen, especially the coming of age ones, they do really depict some very painful and sometimes raw scenes, right? Like somebody losing their virginity, somebody um getting a period, um first kiss like it's always really some aggressive scene that you probably don't want to be looking at but they do try and depict it as close to life as possible and again because i think it's an experience that a lot of people go through at the same time quite openly they don't really have that many hangers up about it maybe it's to do with you know most of europe being secular i'm not too sure or maybe france particularly being more of a secular society they don't really have that much of an issue with it and with there is also this undertone where they kind of um there is a kind of a negative commentary towards Islam, it feels like, um, when you watch the movie. Again, you have to take your own um, interpretation from it. But I do feel it was a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a middle finger F you at Islam and what that does to control young women and to exploit young moms and blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. So definitely check that out. Um, I recommend to watch it again. I think it probably could have done, you probably could do without, you probably could speed through some of the uncomfortable dance scenes, but I do think watching them kind of adds to the overall story. I think having, when you watch one, you quickly realize they're kids. 
is pretty easy right i think in the beginning it's quite uncomfortable to watch them dancing but i think if you have any kind of feelings ab outside of just watching kids dancing and it being weird there's obviously something wrong with you in it that's what i would say i think once you get past the first one it's a lot easier to kind of deal with again i sort of skip through a lot of them anyway myself but it's not as <sighs> I think the sexual suggestion stuff comes only when they little source zoom in and then you get a little bit uneasy. But I think for the most part, you can just watch it and just look at it like a TikTok dance. It doesn't really seem anything more than that because they look like kids. There's nothing about these girls that makes them look like adults. Um, and it's interesting too, because if you think about it, what makes the story more interesting, interesting is the fact that the cast of girls that they use, if I'm not mistaken, they're all they're all kind of from other parts of Europe. It looks like there's one blonde girl. It looks like she might be Central Europe. It's Eastern Europe kind of background. There's obviously the Latino girl. There's another black girl there too. So there is something to be said for maybe there is a different, there is, I don't know. I will get out. This is something coming from a dude. I don't know if this is true, but I would imagine that girls from Latino backgrounds, Latino, yeah, or South American backgrounds, um, kids from parts of Africa, parts of the Caribbean, especially young girls, they probably mature sexually a lot quicker than girls from, you know, some um white picket fence town somewhere middle of middle america with two dogs i just think it's a different experience now again i don't think it's that different especially with social media especially with um smartphones i'm sure they've seen just about everything that they that, that they can see in that direction um and the, as uneasy as that may be but i do think it was interesting that she decided to cast the group of girls and they and they were kind of like the united colors of benetton right they all represented different kind of parts of the French or Parisian social young society sort of thing. I think that was a very interesting play on that regard. But again, um, a fairly innocuous movie, I think, a fairly innocuous coming of age story that is probably a little bit uncomfortable just because of the dance scenes. I think if you take out the dance scenes, it's a pretty run of the mill um, coming of age story. No different to watching something like Call Me By Your Name, which is funny because Call Me By Your Name, I'm pretty sure Timothy Chamelet, the actor in that is like 17. And he's hooking up with like what a twenty-five year old um visiting professor who's meant to be helping him out of his homework, right? Or something, right? And that's not that's probably more that's probably a lot more questionable than this in the regards of the power exchange or that sort of bullshit, right? Um and even that, if you speak to actual gay men, right, they'll tell you that most of their first sexual encounters do happen that way right they happen in a way of like you know them being really young and the person they hook up with being you know fairly old in comparison um but again i do think there is there is a lack of maturity when it comes to having these honest questions or honest conversations about age of cons no, age of consent about age gaps about um obviously the effect of music videos and social media on young boys and young girls because you know if you're si like it would be really hypocritical if Beyonce or somebody was to come out and decry this movie and decry it and say that this has a negative influence on young girls growing up you know you only have to play her last five music videos to see depictions of women that you know probably girls under the age of 15 shouldn't be watching right if you're being a bit of a puritan so that's where it gets a bit it gets a bit sticky like how where is the line that you draw and if there is a line i think as an artist you're you you should be allowed to step over it you should be allowed to depict it in any way shape or form that you please and especially what makes this even more funny is the fact that it's on netflix considering how um, up their ass they get about comedians making some risque jokes right they've got this entire movie um, available on their streaming platform they never ever gave the indication that they were going to buck under the pressure and not have this film shown on their platform i'm sure they've got loads of hits from it blah -de blah 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 but if you're a comedian and you make a bit of a risque joke you offend the wrong group of people your entire career gets taken away from you sometimes they even delete your actual show from the platform so that really is funny in that respect but again i think as a movie in itself i think it's fairly innocuous fairly round the mill coming of age story um and i think it does deserve an opportunity to exist i think again if you're comfortable watching it go and watch it if you're not don't support it but i don't think if anything i don't think it's a movie made by nonsense for nonsense um i think it's definitely a movie of a, a young immigrant woman deciding to make a movie that is sort of like biographical in one sense but also representative of 
I'm assuming what it means to be a young preteen girl growing up, especially when you come from an immigrant family. I think it's a story that can resonate with girls all you all the world around. I'm sure if you sat this down in the focus group and asked a lot of girls if they've gone through the same sort of experience, you know, bullying, um, feeling inadequate, um, family strife, especially the, the, there is a little segment too, which I thought they were going to do where they were kind of going to focus on this weird thing where it kind of felt like she was have to, she was going to have to be the matriarch of the family. Like her mom was maybe going to suffer through some sort of depression and she had to step up. Like there are so many pressures that are associated with growing up in an immigrant family, especially as a young girl, I'd imagine so, especially without your father being around that. I think a lot of kids um, the world over, regardless of gender, will definitely resonate with this film and say, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that this is true. And um, yeah, I don't think it's right for anybody to, poor scorn over somebody else's experience growing up especially if it's a, it kind of differs from you in some market where i think people live their lives in different ways they kind of try to do their best with it especially if you watch the movie you see the mom trying to do the best that she can to wrangle her daughter who's essentially rebelling in front of her eyes but it's just difficult and it? it really is difficult and again I, I was really impressed by it i probably could have done without the close-ups of them dancing and twerking but you know c'est la vie this netflix you just you can just fast forward it it's not that big of a deal but again um, i think the outrage was a little bit ott in my experience from from what i saw are very much over the top considering what else is available for you to watch but yeah if you want to check it out definitely do cube is available now on netflix